hi welcome back to your new lesson in this lesson I'm going to show you what are the activation functions in a neural network and uh, how you can use those neural uh, activation functions in neural networks and how their derivation matters uh, in the deep learning so the first of all there are two type of activation function in neural networks one is linear type of activation function and another one is non-linear activation function all right so in this linear and the non-linear we will be mostly talking about the non-linear activation function and we will not talk about the linear why linear activation function is not preferred because linear activation function is just uh, combination of input all right which is kind of just a linear regression okay but in the neural network we do not need we do not intend to implement the linear regression in neural network we make our deep neural networks to learn a complex inputs like video and the images all right for that case we need to introduce some non-linearity so that inputs and output should not be the linear combination i mean the output should not be the linear combination of a input so what is the linear uh, the function the linear function is fx is equal to just x okay but we are not gonna implement in fact none of the deep learning methods uses the linear activation function um, and mostly the non-linear activation functions are used okay almost all the time so in non-linear activation functions we are gonna talk about the sigmoid hyperbolic hyperbolic tangent and then the relu and the leaky relu all right so uh, the two form we will be talking about the first one is activation function is itself and the another one is the derivation of activation function okay that's the derivative actually uh, let me delete that derivative of activation function now the question comes when we are talking about the activation function why should we bother about the derivative of the activation function the derivative of the activation function actually defines how fast your network converges okay that's mean how less your training time is all right and it also defines the derivative of the activation function whether um, uh, the whether the neurons are being dead and how your neural networks are being trained that is why we have to talk about the activation functions along with the derivative of the activation function okay so what are the activation uh, non-linear activation functions which we are going to talk in this lesson those are the first one we are going to talk about the sigmoid which is also known as the logistic okay logistic activation function then we are going to talk about a tan h and which is also known as a hyperbolic hyperbolic tangent and the third one we are going to talk about relu and the fourth one we are going to talk about leaky relu you might be using sigmoid and relu mostly and you might have also used the hyperbolic tangent as well but i think uh, you might not have used this leaky relu i'll tell you in the detail how this leaky relu helps and uh, uh, how it is better than the relu tan h and the sigmoid activation function all right so let's go ahead the first talk about the sigmoid activation function 
So the first one we have here sigmoid or logistic activation function. Okay, so the function of this activation function. Now the question comes how these activation function works. Let's say you have here input x1. Let me change that. Input, uh, sorry. Let's say you have input x1, x2, dot, dot, xn. Alright. And these are connected with the w1 and then w2 and then wn. These are the weights and these weights are being summed here all right and then there is bias as well bias applied there and then finally here it comes that is the uh, uh, generally we use it as a, uh, the activation function okay so we say it activation function and after this activation functions we get y now you see here y is the first is uh, are the inputs multiplied by the corresponding weights and then the summation of these uh, the inputs and the weight uh, corresponding weights multiplication of corresponding inputs and the weights then with the bias and then it is passed with the activation function and then finally y is produced in each layer so this is kind of used in the feed forward and then y is compared with the uh, with the true value okay uh, the true value and then finally it is uh, uh, the passed into the weights there where changes take place all right and these changes depends on the error or you can say the loss function all right so in the back propagation which we talk in the next lesson uh, later all right so this is how uh, how important this activation function and its act, uh, and its derivative of this activation function so in this we are going to see about the uh, the sigmoid activation function so the activation function if we talk about let's say this is the phi of x there that is is equal to 1 plus 1 divided by 1 plus e power minus x all right so this is the sigmoid activation function and what would be the derivative of this sigmoid activation function the derivative of this activation function is simply phi of x and then 1 minus phi of x all right and if you plot this activation function you will see that the output uh, uh, the activation function it is kind of like this there the maximum value is plus one and minimum value is of course the zero and there is uh, it passes at 0 0.5 those this is activation function but the derivative of this activation function is kind of like this uh, where this is the maximum the maximum is 0 0.25 okay so with this what we see here uh, the maximum value which y can be produced that is in between 0 and 1 and its derivative is non-monotonic derivative uh, and the maximum value of this derivative is 0 0.25 and the minimum could be of course the 0 so you see here there is a problem when input is very high or a very low in that case you see here the gradient or you can see the value of these gradients are vanishing that's when gradients are becoming zero so if gradients are zero or if it is 10 to zero in that case the update of these weights doesn't take place in deep learning are deep neural networks so in that case you can say the learning will be slow all right and the computation of these activation uh, computation of these slope is also costly so what happens 
and the another thing is uh, uh, the output is not also zero centered okay I mean this is not a zero centered that's mean for zero input it doesn't produce the zero output for a zero input it produces 0 0.5 output so the another um, uh, the activation function comes into the place that is the tan h the tan h is also similar to uh, this tan h is also similar to sigmoid function but um, but it's uh, it's a zero centered that's mean for zero input it produces zero output but for higher um, uh, input in positive it produces one and in negative it produces minus one so let me draw this here so this is kind of uh, like this you can say there so this is minus one and this is plus one and here it is the zero all right so this is the tan h and as you know the sigmoid previously which we draw there uh, the sigmoid was started with the zero and then it goes there it was at 0 0.5 so it wasn't there okay so this was a sigmoid and this was the hyperbolic tangent functions okay and and the function of this tan h if i uh, if i write there i mean the equation for this tan h is 1 minus e power minus 2x divided by 1 plus e power minus 2x all right so that we can say here the tan h and uh, let's say this is the phi of x that's the activation function and the phi prime x uh, that's the derivation of uh, derivative of tan h the derivative of tan h becomes 1 minus phi of x square okay that's you can say 1 minus tan h square all right if you take a derivative of these functions you will get this kind of this one so in this case if we plot the derivative of this activation function then what you will get in the derivative in the derivative you will get their uh, non monotonic so non monotonic it will become kind of like this and these are the value but in this case it will be the maximum plus one but you see here it was 0 0.25 in case of a sigmoid function now the one thing you see here apart from this zero centered value tan h doesn't give much advantage over the sigmoid and tan h and the sigmoid functions are mostly used in the output layer when uh, you want to get uh, the probability of any class okay whether it is zero or the one that's mean mostly in binary classification all right so after this tan h we have got the another one that is the relu so relu is most widely used activation function okay why relu is most widely used activation function because it converges fast and it does not suffer uh, 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 the much with the vanishing gradient at least when input is greater than zero but if input is less than zero then definitely it suffers with vanishing gradient so what is the function of activation activation function for relu relu activation function is just simply max of zero or x so if we plot this you will get something like this all right so what you get here this is a phi of x will be exactly uh, exactly x but in this quadrant phi of x will be zero and the activation and the derivative of this activation function is simply one if x is greater than or equal to zero and the zero if x is less than zero so i told you that the first here 
in this region okay in this region no vanishing gradient okay but in this region it suffers with some vanishing gradient okay and another thing is that you see here let's say if you have multiple layers of activation uh, multiple layers of your neural networks so either your uh, activation derivative derivative of activation function is 1 or the 0 and um, it simply gets multiplied with 1 that's mean the derivative of uh, 1 multiplied by 1 and 1 that's mean in multiple stage of deep neural networks so the so slope doesn't get vanished and the another uh, uh, another advantage is that um, its derivative doesn't uh, take much time in computation because it is simply either 0 or 1 but you see here in the previously in hyperbolic tan h and the sigmoid activation function uh, the derivative uh, doing, uh, doing the derivation derivatives of activation functions were taking time that is the another uh, reason why uh, the tan h and uh, sigmoid activation function doesn't converge as fast as ReLU activation functions. So the ReLU activation functions converges faster because its uh, derivative is simply 0 or 1 that's mean it doesn't take much time to much time to take the derivation. But the problem comes here in this region where it uh, uh, if input is less than the 0 then in that case uh, the van uh, gradient get vanished and if gradient get vanished uh, then the neural networks or neurons can be uh, the dead and uh, all the neurons might not get fired okay during the training so that can be a uh, result of improper uh, the training so uh, the researchers introduced the another uh, the activation function that is leaky relu and leaky relu is similar to relu activation function but here you see in this case what happens uh, this goes as it is that's mean phi of x is x but here you see uh, there is a little slope where phi of x is alpha of x all right and then alpha is in general it's 0 0.01 that's when there is very small gradient is also present when input is negative minus infinite to plus infinite okay so in this case what happens the phi of x we can define that's the activation leaky relu activation function phi of x is x when x is greater than or equal to 0 but alpha of x when x is less than 0 all right and the derivative of this activation function that's the phi prime x is equal to 1 when x is greater than or is equal to 0 and it is the alpha when x is less than 0 where uh, the mostly alpha is 0 point zero one so what happens this leaky relu overcomes the problem of relu and relu overcomes the problem of tan h and the sigmoid activation function so these are the four most widely used activation function nowadays in deep neural network so thank you so much for watching this video please do not forget to like and the